Welcome to my library. This is part two of a series that we're doing, just recording a 42 year collection. The books are literally going right up to the ceiling. These are all my maths books up here. These are all my essential sacred geometry books on many topics and cultures. It goes from India and health and healing. And up above there's all these books on Israel and Lebanon and collector's items and magazines and thesauri, um, just general information. But the main library is this one up here where we've got all the mathematics and sacred geometry. So I'm really excited to um, show you a bit of my world because I spend a lot of time in here and these books have completely inspired me to put together, as you know, 30 books that I've written. So one of my favourite books is, is called the, the Harmony of the World by Johan Kepler. He was around the 16th century and he took all the credit for what that we gave to Newton. So we should really be honouring um, the, the works of um, Newton, of, of um, Kepler here. And he did a lot of work on the five platonic solids. But these shapes that you see here, um, the, shape, the shape that's right here, this one here, is called the rhombic dodecahedron. That's this shape here. And the shape next to it, this one here, has 30 diamonds, not 12. And Kepler was obsessed about this shape with 30 diamonds called the rhombic triacontahedron because it was a representation of the Earth grid. And he also did um, um, a lot of other things called stellation. So he would take the um, dodecahedron and put golden ratio pyramids on the 12 edges and it would create a mycosis so this was an infinite geometric series so his work was essential and part of my library is to actually revive the works of kepler um this book here is by um the, is the keys of enoch by jj hertak and the cover shows the name of god written in ancient hebrew and i always loved this book because it was the first time that we ever saw the photo of the atom ever taken. This is in the 1950s by a German um, chemist. He took the first photo of platinum crystal. And the weird thing is that children, 10 year old children in our academy, they draw this very structure through the times table and through digital compression. And, and another page is, so it's a story of um, um, a, an ascension process from the macro to the micro and the the celestial energies are in the human body and it just goes on and on a great it's definitely a great read and and a part of every good library um i have some very rare books that you don't hear about this one's called the crystal connection by um randall and vicky bayer and it explores the sacred geometry of stars of david's like this how they can be aligned to be potentized into a net or a grid that can actually help realign or remind the body um, to wake up and to remember the original harmonics of health. And it goes even deeper where we can be laying down on a bed of crystals in a certain array. And so it's the different types of crystals. So this is very like a plantian knowledge that got lost. And there's a f quite a few people I know who are working with these crystal grids. Um, a little bit of knowledge on magic doesn't help. This is a rare book called The Magus, and it's written by, um, the name is here, Barrett, a yeah, very unknown author called Barrett, um, Francis Barrett. And this book has got some interesting records of um, how the magic squares of three by three and four by four, the magic squares became the names of the angels. So these are, um, arcane angelic scripts and it goes even deeper into looking at things like say the, the seal of solomon so the seal of solomon is actually derived from magic squares where we turn the numbers into art so that's a history on magic um another favorite book and i think this one everyone's familiar with leonardo da vinci i did went to a conference in sydney i bought this book it pulls out and um, I'll just open up a couple of pages because we're all familiar with his work. But the, the one that's most famous, as you know, is the Vitruvian Man. So we can see that 
Um, this one's in the mass consciousness, and it's actually about the mystical squaring of the circle, how we embody the harmonics of the celestial and the terrestrial. And one more picture. This one we're all familiar with. Just to show you how beautiful this book is, we got the, the Last Supper, which was about the Passover. And also there's a lot of hidden geometry in how that was constructed. But perhaps, but perhaps my oldest book, and I've had this book for about 35 years, is the very old Bible. It's, it's got 1828. It's got 1828. And I just want to show you a couple of pictures. It's actually falling apart. So I need to show you um, the, the, just a couple of pages here. So we can see here, for example, Moses was on the mountain receiving the tablets. And it's every page, if I just turn one page at a time, every single page is illustrated. And my main diagram, the one that I love the most, the best chapter in here is in is the last chapter called Revelations. We all know Revelations. Um, so you can see here Archangel Michael um, is being described and but just the the quality of the the lithograph that these were done and next to it here is a map of the world of that time so there's a map of all the musical instruments and historical clothes and history of what happened and so that's a very special book and this one here is going just back a bit, bit to mathematics this one's called calculating primes and i received all his books from america by James McKenney, and even like even inside of it, there's a DVD. But basically, this book, Calculate Primes, was the first book that showed how to predict the next biggest prime. And unfortunately, this work was shut down. But he was the first person I know that actually magically found an amazing solution to calculating primes. So um, I, I love teaching his work by James McKenney. And just one more last book. Um, oh yes, so um, there's a, actually I wanted to show you the sets just quickly before we finish. I've got the set, sets here on lib, um, by Callum Coates, my friend, a professor. He translated Victor Schauberger's work. So you can see there's five books here. The main one would be, would be li Living Energies. So this is Living Energies. I'll just show you a couple of pictures of it. Um, and he was obsessed, or Schauberg was obsessed by vorticity, how water span. And by studying the pathway of vorticity, um, we can learn how to make better um, engineering concepts. And he was able to analyze water down to the fundamental, fundamental, fundamental particle called the Anu, which looks like a torus. So he, he inspired a whole generation of um, mystics and engineers. And just one more image from nature as teacher. Uh, we have the image here of um, the creation of the egg. So the harmonics of the egg is derived from the pentacle and there's a lot of subharmonics in this that all kind of ring bells. So this is a very important diagram not seen in any other book and um, and in this book the energy revolution just to show you a picture of Schauberger himself you can see him putting the spin back into the water. He made many amazing devices. So that's the um, set on Victor, Schau Victor Schauberger. And just the last set, um, I have a set here. Um, it's called Harmonic 33 by Bruce Cathy. This is the main book. So Bruce, Bruce, Cathy, um, um, Bruce Cathy cited, he was a commercial pilot, and he cited, he cited many... Um, UFOs and when he connected them it created the earth grid so that's his main book and um, and this is just a picture of him here an amazing man he just passed away but he was he his work is being revived so um, I'm really keen to um, keep promoting all these these works because these these are masters and we stand on the shoulders of great thinkers and philosophers and mathematicians so that we can harvest this knowledge and then our duty as educators is to pass this on.